Hey everybody, latest edition of the Cold Pack It Is O podcast. Different locales for each of us today, one outside, one inside, but we're trucking along here. Brought to you by Gate City Bank with Jeff Colpack. I'm Dom Izzo, North Dakota State, set to welcome in Missouri State, which we'll get to. But, uh, Jeffrey, it's a day of realignment, uh, nonsense, movement, news, certainly. The American made it official with the six schools that they have brought in, ranging from UAB, uh, Florida Atlantic. I mean, it's, it's crazy there. And obviously now the next wheel up is James Madison. He was sitting there, both conference USA and the Sun Belt are actively pursuing. It appears James Madison, which is going to get everybody's attention here in Fargo. I have two thoughts on that, Dom. Number one, why would JMU consider conference USA anymore? That conference, that league is blowing up. Yep. As- Speak. They're losing members. Their TV deal is not good. There's like a streaming CBS, or is that what I'm hearing now? Like yeah, they still have some ESPN and more CBS Sports Network, but it's not good. It's not right Whoever now. thought the fun belt would take over? And that's it's- the part. It's a great point. I was watching last night, watching Coastal and App State on ESPN2. Great environment. It was a packed house. And that you're right. The fun belt has passed them by. And my point number two is, poor North Dakota State. We are stuck up here with no options whatsoever. The Mountain West made it clear recently that it will not go to any sort of an expansion model. So that door is shut off for the time being. And there's nobody really out West moving anyway. No. And I see you shaking your head. And and poor McFeely is going to (laughs) be – he's probably in the fetal position today. Just – you know, because Mr. And he's right. I mean, FBF, the buys need to go FBS. Yep. I, I try buy that indoor practice facility construction site every day. And every time I look over and I go, my God, this is going to be big. This is going to be huge. Yep. It, 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 it is a stuff of power five programs. Yep. And now in, in our, my, in the, our form story, my story this week, and you, I know you known about this where, fundraising for the phase two has picked up and they're still not going to say it's done, but I'm going to say it's pretty much a pretty done close. Yep. From I understand. Yep. I mean, some people have, have ponied up or maybe it's one person. I don't know, but a verbal commitment to say this thing is done funding is, is pretty good to me. And so you, instead of two phases where you build one phase and then there's sort of room where you leave, it's going to be all in one shot done. $50 million, Dom, $50 million. The intensity is always there for Bison football, for something like this, where it will take them to another level, another stratosphere with their football program. It doesn't, it doesn't really surprise me that the intensity and enthusiasm is there. I think it's interesting what the – I look at it, what the American is doing is going into Texas, Colfax, because I thought the Mountain West was going to do that with grabbing North Texas and grabbing – rice and getting utsa the american went in there swooped in and and kind of blocked them and kept them out of texas which that's intriguing because the mountain west i thought wanted to get that that might be short-sighted as we look forward here granted i know none of those schools are have really been good in football utsa is having a nice year but you want to be in texas you know that we've seen it well texas saturated for division one football they are yeah it's it's really hard to get good if you're outside of the power five in texas i i the, the town, you, you got to get out and get some players. Everybody's in Texas. I mean, everybody. Yes. Some teams have apartments there. And so from out of state, I mean, everybody's in Texas. But the Mountain West, snooze, you lose, man. Yep. Yep. Snooze, you, lose. You, you don't move in this day and age in conference realignment. And that shouldn't have been, you know, if Mountain West was thinking that way. This shouldn't be breaking news to them. Well, this I look at it now where. I mean, the Mountain West has still got to be holding its breath because they figure Boise and San Diego State, if Bob Bowlesby's called and the commissioner of the Big 12, they're going to go, right? I mean, that's that's yeah. a that's a fait accompli, right? Well, and then maybe the Mountain West is waiting for them to go. I mean, maybe. You, you can't do anything about that. You go to, you get that invite, you're out of here. You got to go, yep. And then you just, then you maybe you bring in an NDSU and a, uh, who else would you bring in? That's the question. I don't know what else you do. I don't Buffalo know now. State? Yeah, I mean, with the with the lack of teams that have, or the way that <laughs> the Americans scooped up all of Conference USA, who's left? 
that's the question is who's left now out there that's the part well, there's nobody in california nope no nope. no nobody out there there's nobody why you know washington eastern doesn't have the money i mean when you have rumors of dropping football it's not good no thing. which you know, we'll get to this later but it's all the remarkable for what the eagles have done this year after what the school has gone through correct with, yep with, uh, with the academic side but let's let's not divert too bad right now i will say this right now if i'm james madison man they are in the catbird seat because they can really pick and choose what they want to do like you mentioned conference usa is is teetering right now it looks like and i look at the sun belt with the additions of georgia southern app state and coastal they grab three fcs and i you know coastal's done a power but they were rising that if that's if I'm James Madison, I'm calling them and saying, "What do you need? We'll we'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> whatever, whatever you need us, we're there." I'm not sure what else is out there for JMU right now in in the near future. And you, right now in the conference thing, you have to look at the near future. I don't know what else is out there. Yep. Like American probably not. Conference USA is is like I said, blowing up. I think the Sun Belt is now that the Sun Belt has really raised its profile. They have. They have. And they're good in football. They, I yeah. mean, you look at it, they're, they're pretty good in football. You can laugh all you want about them. They play on a Tuesday and a Wednesday like the Mac, but they've got some pretty good football teams there. Yep. And FCS is just not. It, it's well, not, that's the next question, Colpac. How much does this kill the division when, when this happens? Because it seems it's, it's going to happen. Uh, well, it doesn't kill it. I mean, but I guess. It knocks them down. If, yeah, if, if it's a boxing well, match, it's a knockout, you know. Well, then you get on the horde and you raise more money and you raise your profile. Maybe it leaves something like Delaware's got to get, they have been trying to get better. Big game this weekend with JMU. They, you know, they've redone their facility. They just haven't matched it with the talent level. Yeah. But it's got to be all these other, you know, the Missouri Valley is just totally going to dominate. It's just a Missouri Valley. I would say it's close to that this year. I don't think yep. it's that good this year no it's not it is not let's get to uh the game here we're talking about with an improved missouri state team normally there's no buzz around the bears when they come to fargo but there is some uh, obviously with bobby petrino's team that made the postseason last year they're four and two to start 2021 with a pretty explosive offense and Utah and Utah State transfer quarterback Jason Shelley who's leading the way for the Bears. This is a intriguing game. I'm really excited to see what happens on Saturday with a, a game normally we just snooze through Colpack. I don't think that's not going to be the case on Saturday. I think you can make the case that Bobby Petrino and Craig Bull are a lot of alike in the way they built programs mm. decades apart because Craig Bull came here with not as good of a resume certainly as Bobby Petrino, certainly a power five resume and a pretty extensive one at that, that he'd been at several schools. And what Craig did is he didn't mess around. I mean, he went the tran. There was no transfer portal. He took in transfers up. Yep. The defensive line was the first efficiency. Brought in a guy like Dwight Somerville, who, you know, made some big plays when he was here. Brought in a couple other transfer defensive linemen from Mississippi, right? I think Dwight was from Mississippi, a Juco down there. Brought in, uh, you know, other players to, to fill in here and there brought in assistant coaches who had been at the power five and, and really got his program up to snuff because he knew what it took and the talent level, what it took to be good at the FCS level. One thing about Craig bowl and I'm guessing Bobby Petrino is the same is Craig is really good at looking at film and judging film and making evaluations. Great evaluator, great evaluator of talent. And I'm guessing Bobby Petrino is, is the same way. He, he's not messing around. No. He had a quarterback here and there. No, no, didn't like him. Tried this guy, Jason, you know, Johnson. Didn't like him. Nope. Uh, awesome. What about Jason Shelley? He's been to Utah, Utah State. He's working out good, really good. And receivers, I mean, the, the top three receivers are really trying. good receivers. Really good. I look That's at it. Yeah, I look at it. It's a, you make a good point there. 
And also they're exploiting Petrino's name. They tweeted out earlier, Missouri State did about congratulating um, Lamar Jackson about his season. Obviously Petrino recruited Lamar Jackson to Louisville. That's something if you're Missouri State, you cling to that like you couldn't believe, right? You're trying to get guys to come to Springfield and you wrote about this. I know you're going to write about it for your game day section about this is a school we've talked about forever, that they should be better in football. They have everything there that they should be better. And now maybe he's tapping into that. I talked to Art Haynes this week. He's a longtime play-by-play radio guy for yeah. State and the Springfield radio station down there. And he said, I got tired of opposing coaches when I every time I talked to him, they said, Wow, this is a sleeping giant. <laughs> he goes, I heard that so much over the yeah. years. True. The program is a sleeping giant. And maybe Bobby Petrino is waking it up pretty quick here. But they have the facilities, they have a nice school, they have a nice area. It's it's a vibrant community. It's got good weather. The stadium nice. Yep. And and then you look at it over the years and you go, why is this football team so bad? <laughs> that literally is one of the lines of my story. <laughs> why is this team so bad over the years? Why has it been so horrible? And maybe we're getting our answer. Maybe it's just simple coach, getting the right coach in there. Yep. Well, here's the rub, though. How long is he going to be there, Colpac? That's the question I have. I said three yeah, years. Your prediction – Three, one more year. Yeah. Uh, you know, they brought in Terry Allen, who was a named coach back in the day. He was at Kansas. He was great at Northern Iowa. He couldn't do it. Nope. Steckel right. couldn't do it. But here's a difference. And that was made, that was pointed out to me by the kind art, the SID at Missouri State, that Steckel had never been a head coach. Yep. It's true. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that. Yep. And, and I go back, okay, the Bison women's basketball job. They hired two Division One assistants after Amy Ruley. Neither of them worked out. Nope. Not close. They'd never been a head coach. You bring in Jory Collins, he's called a timeout in the last yep. minute. Of the he's run a program. He knows what's going on. And you can make the case with Bobby Petrino. He knows what he's doing. And, he, and, and <laughs> there's a little family thing going on, too. His son is the old yep. coordinator. His son-in-law is a D coordinator. So the staff is uh, – it understands him and it's uh it's it's been the the right combination for missouri state in short order it's gonna be a good game center man it's so let's gonna- yeah i agree on the on the bison side of things here offensively obviously the attention we were chatting about after the game saturday in normal was obviously the lack of the run game and how ndsu addresses that going forward i know you asked matt Entz about this on monday about just you know can you run away from it how do you do it and that's something how do you make the blitz see. You yeah. know, yeah, with the blitzing coming from defenses that we've seen from UND and Illinois State. It's a recognition mostly on the quarterback is what I took from his answer where yep. the players have to recognize where the pressures come and get them in the right calls. That Right? Is that what you took from that I answer? agree. Yep, that's what I got from it. Yep. And until they figure it out, there's going to be blitzes coming. They're going to keep coming. Every time. I mean, you got to continue to work on it, obviously. And that Brock Spack did it in the playoffs in 2019. He did it again and, and was pretty good at it last week. UND was really good at it three weeks ago. Missouri State's a 4 3. That's a whole different setup there. So that's probably in NDSU's favor. I don't know. Can you learn three, four in one week if you're? I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, with that, I'm interested too. I think I talked to you about this maybe on Monday on my show. I'm not sure if Ganella is a still 100%. He got banged up, obviously, pretty good at UND. He just has not been running the way we are accustomed to seeing him over the last few weeks. And I, that's got to be a factor, too, I believe. That's what I, my opinion. Yeah, it's made note that he's, uh, he needs his running backs to break a tackle. Yep. He hasn't seen enough of that lately. He made that obvious in, in the Monday press conference and after the game, I think. Yes. Uh, yep. That he needs his running backs to be a little more – playmakish like that's where missing hunter lipke at illinois yep. is a big deal because hunter lipke was the one guy at und who was really effective because he can break a tackle he's 236 pounds and powerful missed him at illinois state i don't know about his availability we, we never know that not till about 130 <laughs> yeah we never know the game that, i'm sorry listeners we we try we <laughs> ask, and, and that's just the way it is in life and and i don't I don't, does it, does it keep you awake at night? Not me. It doesn't keep me awake at night, but it does bother me. I'll say that when people ask us, we don't have any, whether, whether James Kayser, Hunter Lipke or Braden 
Thomas are going to play. It doesn't keep me awake, but I, you know, but for the sake of accuracy, and that's what we're all about yep. to convey to our readers and listeners, you keep asking, but. Um, well, I will say though, for all those guys that you just mentioned, Cole Wisniewski, Loshaka Rokes, uh, have looked really good at stepping up in the absence there. You, I know you wrote about Loshaka. We're going to have a feature on him in the pregame show on Saturday. Young man from Wyzetta, Grant Olson, obviously a Wyzetta kid who recruited him out of the Twin Cities. He won a state championship in Wyzetta. And, boy, he's got all the tools, Colt Pack. He's just got – he already told me he added 25 pounds, and there's still plenty of room to go. And so we're down at Illinois State, and you look at the defensive line and the, specifically the defensive ends – and you almost forget about and forgot about that three of the top four were not there. You got LaShaka Rokes, who was making plays. And really, I think most impressive was Will Mostart coming yep. from the side to the outside and showing some ability there. So there was no drop-off. Now, that is a deep team. When You can have a drop-off, or, you know, injuries at a specific spot, like running back, and maybe you won't notice. But how many FCS teams can have injuries in the D-line? And not notice, and you and you don't notice it. Less than two, probably is the answer yeah, to that question. Right. <laughs> they, they've been sensational there. Rokes is a really interesting story. I know you wrote about it. Just that uh, the sky's the limit. I think with that with that young man, he's he still could add quite a bit of weight on, and that's just another find out of the Twin Cities. I'm you were there, and I was talking to him on Tuesday. He played against the Most Arts. He played against Raja Nelson with those Wyzetta Lakeville North matchups in high school. So he's seen some of these guys up close. He knows how good they are. Anybody with shock in their name has got to be good. <laughs> it's a great name. It's an NFL name, Lashaka Rokes. It's Pretty good. Like There's no doubt about it. That's the guy to watch, I think, on Saturday for uh, Missouri State when uh, they come into town here for this game. <laughs> James Madison and Delaware. So let's see yes. here. Is there any chance that Delaware hangs around? They've lost a couple in a row, and JMU seems like they're playing pretty well. Well, Delaware is actually eight and five versus JMU in Newark. <laughs> and so they haven't played since 18. And that was a JMU playoff win. That's right. Lee is 100 yards from 4,000 all purpose in his career, Dom, the, the wow. running back from Delaware. However, JMU defense wins. They gave up a field goal to Richmond last week. I have JMU going in there and shutting them down. Big Sky sees Weber State go to Eastern Washington. This is not the same Weber team. I know you watched a lot of that game on Friday night with Montana State. Is, is there any trouble for them with Eastern or with Eastern Washington with Weber? Oh, there's always trouble with Weber State, I think. But man, Eric Bierier is the hands down Walter Payton award winner front runner. He should have so, won it in the spring, Frank, frankly, in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, and so what he did, what they did against Idaho last week was incredible. I, they're hot. you got to go yes. with East Washington. They're hot. So here's a game on paper at the start of the season looked pretty good. Now, I'm not sure how good it's going to be. Jacksonville State and Sam Houston are playing on Saturday. This is a conference game because, obviously, the two leagues have combined this year. Jack State is the most temperamental team in the FCS. Sam Houston, this is their one real tough game they're going to have. Is there any chance here for John Gross's team on Saturday? Boy, you're right. They are a freaky team. Talking about Jacksonville State. You beat Florida State, and then they partied for the next three weeks. <laughs> you, know, you barely beat North Alabama. Lost to Tennessee Martin. Got hammered against Kennesaw State. Now you got to go to Huntsville. I don't know. I, I, I just uh, – the Huntsville train is, is off and running. Jacksonville State, was that – they beat Florida State, and that – okay, great. Good season. Now, Congratulations. Gross's contract is up after this year. I don't think oh. there's a whole lot of supporters there either that they may make a move after this season, unless they win this game. I Who knows, right? That'd be a typical Jacksonville State thing to do. Interesting. Maybe. In the Valley, Youngstown State at Indiana State on Saturday. What do you got here? Well, Indiana State, again, I, I've said this two or three times, the most disappointing team in the Valley with all the veteran players they had back. I just can't – I can't pick uh, the Sycamores anymore. Yeah, I think Youngstown is is trending in the right direction. I think they're going to play better football here over the second half. We're going to see them in the middle of November. Illinois State at South Dakota. You mentioned the, the Yotes. I think I say it every week just to give you some props here that they are the most improved team in the Valley. They showed it on Saturday what they did in Northern Iowa. They were up 20 points going to the fourth quarter against Northern Iowa. Yeah, 24 0. Weren't they leading, right? At one point, it was 34 14 going to the fourth yeah, quarter. It was a final. 
But one thing we forgot about South Dakota in the couple down years the Coyotes went through is Bob Nielsen can coach. I mean, this can coach. He got Western Illinois to the playoffs. They have outscored their opponents and the FCS opponents 149 to 31 in the first half this year. Wow. And that tells me that this is a guy that gets his teams ready to play. He's a good coach. I'm going, you know, in Illinois State, for God's sakes, what's going on with that offense? I've never Not seen good. a horrific offense with a, such a good program. Yes. South Dakota is going to win this by three touchdowns. I agree. I think that's a route. Western Illinois in Grand Forks. UND's lost three in a row. Do they stop the slide on Saturday against Western? <laughs> Well, the Otis Wea saga is interesting. Yeah. We don't know what's going on there. Okay. And is he going to play? Is he not going to play? Um, the, I, I don't know about UND. I, I, I can't figure them out anymore. Western is very good offensively. If UND doesn't come out to play, if they got some issues going on, or I don't know, they just can't handle their 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 uh, um, their star running back. If he's in or out, um, I'm going with Western Illinois. Ooh, all right. I like you. I think you and D bounces back at home. I think yeah. they might. They I, might I, had a, I had a bad, that that. Was a bad pick. I'm going with you and D, but let me put it this way. <laughs> they better be careful of Western. Yes, that's a good way to put it. I agree. I agree with that. Western's got some guys. They, they scared SIU. I know they did that earlier this year. Northern Iowa goes to South Dakota State. This is a playoff game for the Panthers, is it not? They yes. have to win this game. But they're not. <laughs> I mean, they're just <laughs> – Things are not going well at Northern Iowa, and um, I, you know the, the new new quarterback, their starting quarterback, is in the transfer portal. That's never a, a good thing. South Dakota State seems to be back on track. Yep. The injuries, but like NDSU, I think they're deep enough. It's all tracking towards that game in a couple of weeks between the Chats yes, and the Wise, and it could be everything in early November. But I think SDSU takes care of you and I. So as we sit here today getting ready for the weekend, I would say I have five Valley teams in the postseason with the Bison, SDSU, USD, Missouri State, and uh, who's my, who am I forgetting? South Dakota. Those would be my five right now. Um, I, I can't deny that. I can't go against that. I, I think the CAA is down, and Big Sky is... Um, I'd say four right now, probably. Yeah. Better. We'll see how things shake out there as far as teams beating each other up. But I don't see it in, in much the manner. The problem with the CAA is, is, is like Albany and some of those teams got off some bad starts. Bad starts, no doubt. Nelson and Albany and the, the, the two, and NDSU and just too many losses right now. Of course, also with the unbalanced schedules in both those leagues, some don't play the everybody. You know, like UC yep. Davis isn't going to play the Montanas. So we don't really know how good UC Davis is. And they lost to Idaho State earlier this season. So how good are they? We just, we're not going to know until... Uh, we get to the postseason. So, reminder, of course, Bison Game Day live on WDAY 10 a.m. on Saturday morning, and then NDSU and Missouri State 2.30 on WDAY as the Bison try to continue their win streak against the Bears. Also, they had not allowed a point to Missouri State since 2018, and that was early mm. in the game. The last two times they played, Missouri State has not scored. I don't think that's going to happen on Saturday, Colfax. This Missouri State offense is good. That's a good stat. Yeah, it's a trend, but I think that trend will end. I agree. Great stuff as always, bud. We'll talk to you later. All right. See you, Dom. Jeff Kolpak joining us, of course. And you can listen to each and every podcast available at Apple iTunes or, of course, at Inforum.com. We'll see everybody at the game on Saturday.